Hello YouTube viewers. I'll be cutting this piece of aquamarine burl in this uh, standard round brilliant shape. And here is an image of it. And uh, a fastening diagram is also included here. And this piece is a chunky piece and it's very light blue. In fact, it's, it's just almost completely clear, but there's just a hint of blue when you put it against a white piece of paper. And uh, it's so chunky, I'm just going to cut around brilliant with it. It's, uh, it, it's probably best a, a light colored piece of rough like this to make it a, a, as deep as you can and cut it in some type of a square or a rectangle to take advantage of the to try to deepen the color but anyway I'm not going to do that I'm just going to make a round out of it and uh, we'll see how it turns out and I'm starting by uh, cutting a flat spot where the table would be and uh, this helps attach your dot flat dop stick and I believe this was a 600 grit lap that I used for this you got to be careful, you can grind down your fingertips and fingernails on these also, so watch that. And uh, here I put it in my uh, transfer jig and I'm getting it positioned just right so I can, I can glue it on. And here we are, I've used epoxy glue to attach the stone to the dop, brass dop stick. And I'm going to facet the girdle this time. A lot of the small round stones I do, I just make a round smooth girdle, but I'm faceting the, the girdle on this one and fully polished also. And here you can see I've cut all of the uh, facets and here they're polished. Pre-polished and uh, final polish these ready to start cutting the uh, pavilion main facets and brake facets. Okay, as we go around here, I've gone ahead and cut the main facets. Actually, these are the brake facets, yes. I'm, I'm cutting a little different uh, sequence than I usually do. I'm cutting the, the brake facets first and coming back and putting the main facets in. Here I've pre-polished them all. I use an 8,000 grit uh, copper lap for pre-polishing. Here I've done the final polishing on the uh, the girdle facets. I'm using cerium oxide for final polishing. And, uh, this is a lightning lap topper lap that I used. And, uh, I, I used that for all of the pavilion. So I've gone ahead and transferred the stone using more epoxy. And I'm going to start cutting the crown right now. Using the 600 grit lap. Let's see what we look like right now. Yeah, I've got quite a bit of height that I have to cut away here. I'm uh, so leaving plenty of room for mistakes or any problems, which I didn't have any. I didn't have anything in the way of inclusions to cut out or any problems at all. So it, it all went real well. I'm getting down to where I have to be very careful and set my girdle thickness right now. Okay, I'm getting ready to start some more facets. These are the these are the star facets. I've made it through the mains, the brakes, 
and I'm now cutting the star facets at 27 degrees and making my adjustment to cut deeper lowering the facet head you can watch the digital readout count down to 27 degrees which is my stopping point but uh, I use that as a guide right now because I've got to really put my eyes on to the stone and uh, it's time to watch the meat points and get them just right. I've got my meat points right on uh, here and uh, actually it looks like I've pre-polished everything. Yes, that was a completely polished uh, crown. So here I am starting to cut the table facet. This is another area you've got to be really careful. You can, you can cut right through your star facet meets and uh, be in big trouble really fast. So and here I've done, I finished cutting the table and I have pre-polished and done the final polishing with the cerium oxide polishing lap and uh, I'm going to soak the stone overnight in acetone so it will release from the, the dot stick. And here we are with the finished stone and uh, it looks like clear quartz because all, all of the color washed out. This is a brilliant uh, cut and uh, the stone was such a light blue that uh, the brilliance and brightness of this this cut, this design, uh, just it fades out all of the color that you had. And uh, so it, it mostly looks just like clear quartz actually, but it's more brilliant than quartz burl. It's got a higher refractive index, so it's a very brilliant and bright stone. And here we are on the turntable and uh, see how bright the stone is when it comes around. But I'm going to be looking for some darker blue aquamarine. I'd really like to cut something with some really nice blue color instead of some of the lighter stuff I've cut lately. Of course you pay for the darker color too. I mean uh, the, something that's lighter is in color is cheaper. I mean the very very nice blue, deep blue aquamarine command the highest prices. Okay, I'm taking the uh, gem outside so you can get a, a good look at uh, the brilliance out in the daylight. And, uh, I was really pre pleased with the brilliance of this gemstone. It is really a nice shiny bright stone. And I believe this was a nine, about nine millimeter in diameter when I finished it up. It's probably around three carats in weight. Okay, we'll see you next video and uh, take care.